Albero Bello is situated on two hills, one separated by a riverbed. The makeup of its agricultural landscape represents a synthesis of the historic events which have marked the land. There are two areas forming an urban settlement, Monti and Naya Piccola, and they are both considered national monuments. The most touristy part of Alberobello is Rioni Monti. The district boasts over a thousand truly set along picturesque sloping streets paved in the local stone. Alberobello is known as the capital of the Trulli. The Trullo is a fascinating architectural feature of this area of Puglia, a building with a conical roof made without mortar. It is a small dwelling made from the local limestone with dry stone walls. On the highest part of the face of the cone, very ancient pagan and Christian symbols were painted in white chalk, symbols of magic and proprietary powers all pointing in the direction of the first deity, the sun. In Selva and Alberobello, which were bound by the orders of the counts of Aquaviva, inhabitants could begin to build houses out of bricks and mortar only after being freed from feudal control by a royal decree on the 27th of May, 1797. The presence of man on the Murgia hills and in the Selva woods goes back in time. The land, which consists of a limestone ridge that rises about 600 metres from the coastal plains, has favoured the development and evolution of building in stone over thousands of years. The name Dolos of the Cupolas, which are found in the Messina tomb of the Peloponnese, the Byzantine Turulos and the more recent Latin Turris are the words to indicate a dome-shaped circular construction. The exterior of the building was covered with flat slabs of coarse for a stone known as chiancelle. They were placed in rows one on top of the other, like scales with alternating joints and sloping towards the outside. Along the main street are Trulli, which are shops filled with souvenirs and local crafts. Local crafts and products sold include miniature truly made from the local stone, olive wood object and even the local wine. Trulies are an extraordinary example of man's ingenuity and adaptability. They demonstrate how man was able to settle even in a place where house building was forbidden, except for temporary shelter and where the only building material available was stone. The Rioni Monte area of Alberobello includes about a thousand truly, lining seven streets which meet at the top of the hill where the trulo shaped church of Sant'Antony dominates the view. It has a facade of three wings, which are decorated with a rose window, along with two other round windows. The roof is cone-shaped and is almost 20 meters high. This lovely whitewashed church has a bell tower with a small dome.
In 1926, the master of art, De Leonardis, started the construction of St. Anthony's Church. The Romanesque style of the church is pervaded by the peculiar and picturesque architecture of the Trullo. Its main vault is characterized by a high Trullo sided by two small Trulli, dominated by another Trullo placed on the bell tower. The inner church is based on a Greek cross plan and contains noteworthy works of art as the low reliefs representing St Anthony's virtues and some frescoes by Adolfo Rollo. To build the Trullo, one began by digging a tank into the rock face. This tank was like a room with 3 meters in diameter and 5 meters deep. It was essential to be able to collect the rainwater from the Trulli roofs for domestic use. Once the vault was covered, the foundations were dug around a base of about 3 meters. Then the stones were laid down to make the perimeter base which was always quadrangular. The lower part of the trullo was made up of walls of about two meters high, perpendicular on the inside, whilst outside they were built slightly sloping, like the boundary walls of military constructions. The Siamese trullo is found in the Rioni Monti, the Trulloni of the Siamese brothers is an ancient double trullo with an elliptic base. It has no windows and is surrounded by a buttress wall. The history of Alborobello is that of a small community of farmers which grew over two centuries from the end of the 16th century in spite of the fact that they had no judicial recognition. Actually, local historians mention the existence, already from the 15th century, of an earlier nucleus of about 40 little circle-based dwellings having conic tops scattered around on a wooded land. They are very likely to be prototypes of the typical kind of building which existed for a very long time in the so-called Silver Arbor Belly. The year 1654 marks a meaningful date for the birth of Alborobello. It was in that year that the Count Aquaviva was forced to present to the Royal Court of Justice appropriate justifications about the illegal dwellings in Alborobello, following a denouncement from the Duke of Martina. Aquaviva gave the orders to immediately demolish most of the truly existing at that time and ordered the inhabitants to go into the woods. The result of the inquiry was positive for the Count, 
who then recalled the farmers and authorised the rebuilding of the Truly with the severe obligation not to use any cement or mortar but only stone. The second truly district is called Aya Piccola. This is very different to Rione Monti and is less visited by tourists. The name Aya relates to a spacious clearing which was used for the threshing of grain in older times. All the districts located in the southeast contain 400 truly in total and most of them are resided. The Trulies are a symbol of the overcoming of poverty and have become the greatest symbol of our cultural and economic strengths. The specialised restoration techniques used that observe architectural authenticity have left the Trulies perfectly livable and as a living example of organic architecture in action. There is some speculation over the origins of the name Alberobello. One local historian believed that it was derived from the Latin beautiful arbor or tree of war to mark a tree which witnessed a battle nearby. Alternatively, the suggestion by Lipolis was that it was derived from the ancient Alborelli, modified in time to Alborbelli and then Alborobello to describe the beautiful trees from the ancient forest there. Finally, the most likely interpretation comes from the historian Liuzzi, who claimed that the name means stately oak, referring to a tree on a main road in Alborobello, which was also a border between two regions. The area Aya Piccola includes about 400 truly and it is the most untouched part of the town. All around us is a labyrinth of paved roads, all with immaculately whitewashed walls and grey conical roofs topped by crosses or other religious symbols, some of pagan origin. The most important is the Trullo Sovrano, situated far from Rioni Monte and Aia Piccola. It is composed of 12 Trulli. Built in the first half of the 18th century, this Trullo is the only one with two floors. Its stately conic dome, about 14 metres high, rises imposingly in the middle of a group of 12 cones. The Trullo, which was built for the Perta family around 1780, 
was made by the Contrafernity dei Santissimi as an oratory in 1823. For a long time, it contained the relics of the patron saints of Alberobello, the holy Dr. Cosma and Damiano. Today, it is open to the public and hosts main cultural events. The large front door has a pointed arch in a typical Hellenistic style and over it there is a lunette with a crucifix. Inside the hall is the most important room of the house. In place of the usual wood floor there is a stone cross vault supported by a system of four Roman small arches leaning against the two major walls. The oldest rooms represent the first Trulli, built up area, and round which the rest of Trulli Sovrano was then constructed. The kitchen is a rectangular place which widens further thanks to the openings that communicate with the inside court garden in an extraordinary integration of architectural design and natural colours. The bedroom is the smallest room but perhaps the one which better recalls evocative atmosphere and memories at the time of the highwayman. The trap door, which can be closed by wooden lid, serves as the entrance to a large wheat warehouse in the room between the entrance vault of the ground floor and the flooring of the first floor. The museum complex was set up in order to preserve and give an account of the history of the area of the Trulli settlements, which have been recognised by UNESCO as being part of the world's historic and artistic heritage. The Albero Bello Territory Museum is located in a place of high cultural and environmental significance, the Murcia Trulli and Grottos. It is the most complex of all the Trulis and contains 15 interconnected Trulis. A very well organised network of historical and cultural services has been set up together with the Territorial Museum with the Museum of Exhibitions acting as the centrepiece. In the museum rooms, there are displays of posters of all the various exhibitions that have taken place here since 1997, and traditional equipment used for work in the fields, and that which give an idea of how stone was carved in Alborobello. Also, there are truly decorations and stone carvings, and the tools used by the trularo or trula maker to carve the stone. The centre was born from the desire to preserve and to recount the story of this area and to help understand the story of the Trulli, which are recognised by UNESCO as a historical object of world interest. The museum has showrooms containing tools and artefacts belonging to Mujo de Trulli's history, tradition and folklore, in addition to being the home of temporary exhibitions of figurative arts, an example of dry building, tradition of the Trulli. The section Household Furnishings shows items of common use in the 19th century rural houses. The complex, bought by the council in 1986, was completely refurbished during the 90s and returned to its original splendour.
it's possible to find all truly for restoration in Alborobello. The traditional structure is almost the same. Once through the entrance, one finds oneself in the first room, the biggest in the house, where the family spent most of the day. Here, there are some tables, chairs and other pieces of furniture. Next to the traditional chest, there was the loom, the prehistoric loom where amidst one side and another, cloths and shawls were weaved. The main town square, Piazza del Popolo, is a pleasant open space with the cathedral of the city. The Medici's Holy Saints Cosmas and Damian Cathedral was founded in 1609 on an agricultural area. It features a neoclassical facade dating back to 1885, but the building was completed in the following years, according to the original project by the eclectic local architect Antonio Curry. The cathedral has an imposing facade, simply decorated with columns of fine capitals and flanked by two tower bells. The facade is rich in sculptures, The monumental entrance is preceded by a large flight of 17 steps. The doorway is the work of artist Adolfo Rollo and it is inspired by a well-known chapter of the Gospels, the Boatitudes. Roman Catholicism is a dominant religion in Italy, with 85% of native-born citizens being Catholic. Religion is an all-pervasive force in Italy, and one cannot know the true nature of this country and its people without understanding the role faith plays in Italian life. Throughout Italy are Christian holy sites that have been venerated for thousands of years, even in pagan times. Countless churches in Italy are built from ancient Roman temples or above shrines of the old mysterious religions such as Mithraism. The decoration of the interior is modern and has been patronized by the priests who administer the church in recent times. In the shrine it is worth seeing the frescoes and paintings. Master Rollo's low reliefs and crucifix, the main altar, various chapels with statues and sculptures, and the choir. Inside, it's possible to admire two wooden statues of the two saints who were patrons of the town. The devotion to the saints Cosmo and Damien, who are very popular in Apulia, attracts many believers from the neighbouring towns to come on pilgrimage to the shrine, especially in the months of September and October. Saint Cosmas and Damien were imprisoned by the enemy of Christianity and were decapitated in 1785. The Reverend Petter, Vicar of Alborobello, moved the mortal remains of the two martyr saints to Rome. 
On the 22nd of June 1797, the first mayor was elected, Francesco d'Amore, who began to build this house, the first officially made with the use of mortar. This structure represents a real technique constructive step by the first houses in 19th century Trullo housing. It symbolizes the liberation of the inhabitants of Alberobello from the tyrannous feudal power. The national monument since 1930, restored in 1951, Casa d'Amore currently hosts numerous art exhibitions. In the capital of the Trulli, the two main districts of the historic town are completely made up of Trulli, grouped together and lined along the steep winding streets that climb up the hill. The Trulli di Alberobello were included on the UNESCO World Heritage Site in December 1996.